The theater is filled with many different parts, both visible and invisible to the average theater goer. Today we'll go over some of the terms you might encounter when we tour the high school theater. First, a quick review. Let's remember how we know where we are on stage as an actor. Upstage is the area of the stage furthest from the audience. Downstage is the area of the stage closest to the audience. At one time, stages were raked or slanted towards the audience. So, downstage was literally lower than the rest of the stage. Stage left is the actor's left when facing downstage. And stage right is the actor's right when facing downstage. Therefore, if a director asks you to move stage right, you will always move to your right. Center stage is the center of the performance area. Finally, on stage refers to any area of the stage that's visible to the audience and off-stage is the area surrounding the stage, but not visible to the audience. Now that we know where we are on the stage itself, let's look at the different parts or components of the stage. The front part of the stage, the area in front of the closed curtain, is called the apron. Backstage is the term referring to the areas of the theater next to the stage. These areas are generally not accessed by the audience, and usually only refers to areas right next to the stage. Cast members often need to move quickly from one offstage side of the stage to the other without being seen by the audience. To do so, there's usually an area behind or underneath the stage called a crossover. In most modern stages, there's a large permanent window that frames the stage. This window is called the proscenium, proscenium arch, or simply the proscenium. Finally, the wings are areas of the stage that are still part of the stage floor but are out of sight of the audience and are therefore off stage. This area is usually used for cast and crew getting ready to come on stage or to do work backstage during the show. Probably the most famous part of any classic theater is the big curtain, but did you know a fully equipped theater uses many different types of curtains? The one most people are familiar with is called the main curtain and sits directly behind the proscenium arch. This curtain often signals the beginning and end of a production and is often used to signal the beginning and end of acts, scenes, or even parts of scenes. A second curtain, the midline, is generally situated about a third to one half of the way upstage from the main curtain. Its function is to provide a more shallow performance area, but because it is typically black, it provides unique advantages. When the midline curtain is closed, actors can be performing in front of the curtain while backstage workers work quietly behind the curtain to change the next scene. The midline is also a great way to change the look of the stage without striking or removing anything behind it. Across the back of many stages is a plain white or gray curtain called the cyclorama, or SIC for short. This curtain can be lit by colored lights and it reflects that light, providing a wall of color behind the actors. This can be used to reflect the mood of the characters or can show the time of day. Instead of a sick, many theaters use a large curtain painted with the design of a skyline, wall, street, or any other scene that completes the picture that the scenery and props on stage begin. This type of curtain is called a backdrop. While many theaters choose one backdrop per production and leave it up for the entire show, Many other theaters use more than one of these huge curtains, changing them in the middle of the show. Finally, the stage has many short curtains along the wings. These curtains are called legs, and are used to provide access for the cast and crew while still masking the backstage from the view of the audience. As we move off of the stage and out towards our audience, we find ourselves in the house. The first feature you will find in many theaters is an orchestra pit. It is here where musicians sit for a musical or ballet and perform out of sight of the audience. Many theaters have a floor that can be raised and lowered to allow easy access for musical equipment. Still others have a lid that can cover the orchestra pit and provide additional performance space above when it's closed. The auditorium is the space where the audience is seated. This space includes the main seating area, balconies, aisles, and entrances. Typically in the back of the auditorium, you will find the control booth, a section of the theater designated for operation of technical equipment, lighting, and sound. Sometimes there are two control booths, placing lighting and sound each in the most ideal location. 
And sometimes other theater crews, such as the director or stage manager, will sit in the control booth communicating with backstage crew via radio. High above the auditorium, many theaters have a catwalk, a section of the house hidden in the ceiling where lighting and sound elements can be manipulated. The last important term for this section of the theater is front of house. Often abbreviated FOH, front of house refers not only to the areas in front of the house, such as the lobby, box office, concession stand, and so on, but also to any technical items located in front of the proscenium arch. Thus, lights in front of the proscenium arch might be referred to as FOH lights, and the sound control might be referred to as FOH sound, especially if we move from theatrical terms into live sound production for concerts. Lastly, we'll move from the visible portions of the theater to the backstage. The first place actors might report on the night of the show is the dressing room. This is the place where actors get into costume and makeup. Until they're needed on stage, the actors can wait in the actor's lounge or green room. Sometimes the dressing room and the green room might be part of the crossover, the area backstage that allows actors to move from one side of backstage to the other. One of the single most expensive and useful features in high-end theaters is a fly system, a system of ropes, counterweights, pulleys, and other tools designed to allow backstage crews to fly set pieces, backdrops, and lights on and off stage using a large opening above the stage. Finally, just like the catwalks above the house, there is often a catwalk above the stage to allow crew to access lighting and sound equipment. Sometimes the easiest way to trigger a special effect is simply to put a crew member on the catwalk and trigger it manually. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick run through the parts of the theater. When you visit the high school, look carefully to see which components our theater has and which ones it does not.